Girard's 17-footer is short. Rebound, Marvin puts it up, and good. Look out! Do you believe it? It's gone! Short. Open. Chicago with the lead! Thanks for staying up later. We're back in New York. And that'll do it for all of us tonight from Rio. Our closing segment is called Consider This. I was Bob Costas' intern when I was in college. I've known him for 40 years. Two things. One, he's one of the nicest guys I've ever known. And two, and you already know this, he's arguably the best TV sportscaster of all time. Tonight, we talk life, sports, and about his incredible career. Bob is tonight's Cardinal Buick Sunday Conversation. This is part one of our two-part interview. Well, Bob, most people in their 60s, when they've been with a company for a long time and step away from that company, slow it down. Instead, you're working for the MLB Network, HBO, and Turner Sports. That's not exactly slowing down at all. You know, the list makes it look like it's much more work than it actually is. CNN, HBO, and Turner Sports, where I just parachuted in to help out because Ernie Johnson had an overlap between the start of the NBA season and the NLCS. They're all under the banner of Time Warner. And I've been at the Major League Baseball Network since its inception in 2009. So it isn't the number of different uh, mailing addresses, if there are mailing addresses these days. It's how many things I'm doing. I'm only doing as much as I want to do under exactly the terms that I want to do it. How about politics? It's such a polarizing time we're living in, mm -hmm. and you could easily stay away from it like most sportscasters do. And I'm not saying that you go on your show and give a Rachel Maddow-like monologue, but you're not right. afraid to voice your opinions, and yet you risk alienating some of the fan base. Take me through that. When things that are viewed as political issues have intersected with sports, then I've done that. Some people view the question of the Washington football team's name, which I addressed maybe a decade ago, and took care to distinguish between that and other team names. Just get a dictionary. You don't have to be liberal or conservative. It has nothing to do with political correctness, which at times is ridiculous and out of hand. Um, but get a dictionary. Every dictionary defines redskins as derogatory, a slur, et cetera, et cetera, four or five different um, definitions of it as being a negative term. So I was called upon to say that uh, the issue had arisen. Washington was playing Dallas a few days later on Sunday night football. And so I talked about it. Um, but on, only when only when sports and those political issues have intersected and many of the things I've said could just as well be interpreted as conservatives, as conservative, as liberal. But in this atmosphere, people don't really want to give a fair characterization of what you have to say, at least some people. It's in their best interest to have a hot button that, that pushes the resentments of their preferred audience. And what you actually think and who you actually are often doesn't matter. And it just comes with the territory. Really enjoyed your interview with Jerry Jones. Amazed at mm -hmm. age 79 how sharp he is. But I was a little disappointed in his answer when he called Stan Kroenke a man of principle. He's not real popular here in St. Louis. Obviously, yeah. you know that. I'm wondering your encounters with Stan, your impressions. My encounters with Stan have been very few, and he's almost like a sphinx. I mean, he's not exactly forthcoming, even in a social situation. I don't mean that as a criticism, but my impression is very close to the vest. Uh, when Jerry Jones, uh, who I know is uh, not universally popular, very popular in some places, not so much in others, when Jerry Jones said what he said about Stan Kroenke, it flashed through my mind to say, you'd probably get an argument on that from folks in St. Louis, <laughs> but that wouldn't have taken us anywhere, and we were short on time anyway. After Stan did say that he would pay the legal bills, he said that in Houston mm -hmm. six years ago, and then he said he would not, and then John Maris said, well, we wouldn't have voted for you to leave if yeah. you, you know, didn't say that. Kind of your whole overview. I know this is not exactly what you're involved with every day of the week, but I'm sure you yeah. have opinions. Well, I guess the uh, the needle that Stan is trying to thread is that I promise to pay the legal bills, but not any damages or any award or any settlement that the NFL arrives at with St. Louis interests. John Mara and the other owners, at least almost all of them, don't see it that way. 
whatever ensues from legal action by St. Louis interests, they believe that Stan Kroenke is on the hook for that. Otherwise, they would not have voted to allow him to leave St. Louis. And just about everybody believes outside of Kroenke himself and some supporters, I guess, within the league, that uh, they ignored or circumvented their own fairly clear relocation guidelines in order to allow him to move to L.A. Because of how ugly it got with the John Gruden emails revealed, how conscious is the NFL of not letting this go to trial and some other things popping out? Yeah, and that was part of my line of questioning to Jerry Jones a week or so ago on HBO. You get into discovery. I mean, John Gruden was hardly the focus of the investigation into the Washington football team, but he got swept up in it. None of these owners, even those who have led exemplary existences, if not, none of us are perfect, but even those who have seemingly little to worry about, nobody wants their every email or their every detail of their financial existence examined and brought to public light. And neither do they want congressional oversight. Uh, the House Reform Committee has been looking into uh, the Washington football team situation. Sometimes when Congress gets involved in sports, there's some grandstanding involved, but it also makes the powers that be within sports squirm. So this is where, especially if uh, the proposed settlement is upwards of a billion dollars, as some people think it might be, this is where the NFL might say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, let's see what we can do here. And that could include a new team for St. Louis.